Okay, I've made a distance versus time graph. Remember, usually the time is usually on the bottom here and the distance or displacement is usually over here on the vertical axis. And I've got two sets of data. I've got, I've got a red set and I've got a blue set. And what you should notice is that one set of this data is kind of in a straight line. And that indicates that we have a constant continuous rate of change. Okay, it's, it's what we would call uniform change. So this represents uniform rate of change. Okay, uniform meaning it goes up at a constant, continuous uh, amount each time. You'll notice the blue dots here, not quite um, so much. And this is uh, the curve that we've seen previously. I'll just do that in a dot. I'm going to hand draw. I, I did this with a French curve on another video, but it goes like that. And what we'll see here is that this is non-uniform. When you have uniform change, you can take the, um, the slope of the line and that will give you the average of whatever it is you're, you're calculating. So here, the slope equals the average. Uh, with a DT graph, we will find that the slope is the velocity. And the velocity is how much the increase in the Y variable or the, uh, the distance over the change in time. The other thing to keep in mind with any of these graphs is that you can determine the velocity at any moment in time that you wish. And you can figure it out anywhere along these curves. And that is referred to as the instantaneous velocity. Now, the big difference with these graphs is, is that the, the red dots, the original red dots that now is that black line, is the instantaneous velocity is always the same, okay? Because we're going to use it along this curve. But you'll see in this purple curve line that the instantaneous velocity here would be different than here, which would be different up here. But we can find the instantaneous velocity, that's, it, that's the velocity at any moment in time, versus the average velocity where we need that, that curve or the non-curve, the flat line, and we find the slope of the line drawn here. And when you look at it, the question is, okay, is this linear data or is this some kind of uh, funny curve of some sort? Well, really what this is, is this is just linear data. But what we've had is we've had a few measurement errors and that's okay because real science has some uh, some some error in every single measurement and maybe we just missed this one maybe we're measuring every two seconds and here we measured 2.3 seconds just by mistake uh, maybe here we made a slight error in our distance uh, of whatever it is we were measuring so we will have some slight errors in our data that'll result in some funny looking lines or, or uh, points on our graph. But that's why we want to have lots of good data points, not just two or three. You know, having 10 data points is really helpful. If we have linear data, that tells us that our velocity is not changing. So this is our velocity or our speed, depending upon if it's a scalar or a vector. And it represents a change in the distance over a change in the time. So once again, our velocity or our speed is the change in distance divided by the change in time. And as we discussed in our rate change video, a change in distance is the second distance subtract the first distance, or we could say that the change in distance is the final distance, subtract the initial distance. Either or is acceptable. Likewise, for the time, 
the change in time is T2 take away T1, or it is the final time take away the initial time. So what we can do is we can write our velocity formula in terms of our distances and our times, d2 subtract d1 divided by t2 subtract t1. Frequently when we're solving problems in kinematics, we will usually find that the initial time t1 is equal to zero seconds. And when that happens, we frequently just call this time, not the change in time. So there is some um, there is some interchangeability in terms of time or delta t in some of the equations that we use. Getting our equations using some algebra. So having our initial equation where the velocity is the change in distance divided by the change in time, we should be able to manipulate that to figure out that the change in time is equal to the change in distance divided by the velocity. And once again, we could write that in terms of our distance and our time. The other thing we should be able to do is come up with a formula for the change in distance. And the change in distance is V times delta T. Once again, we could write that as d2 minus d1 is equal to the velocity times t2 minus t1. I don't recommend you go memorizing every formula because physics has a lot of formulas, but you should be good at knowing the basic formulas and using algebra to manipulate them to the format that you want. The velocity formula what we see is that we have a change in velocity over a period of time. And we could write that as the delta V over delta T, or as our V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. And just like our velocity formulas, we should be able to manipulate those into some other equations. So we could have delta T equals delta V over A, or our T2 minus T1 equals V2 minus V1 divided by acceleration. Okay. Uh, and lastly, we should be able to write this in terms of our velocity. Our velocity would be A times delta T, or that would be V2 minus V1 equals A times T2 minus T1. Once again, don't go memorizing. Learn how to do the algebra to manipulate your equations.